Hello, this is part one of a two-part series where I demonstrate how to set up a multiplayer game server using AWS Lambda, API Gateway, and DynamoDB. This example is for games that require a continuous connection between the server and client, but nothing crazy like an MMO or real-time FPS. For this two-player example, there isn't really matchmaking as the first available session is just taken by the next player to join. You could introduce a ratings-based matching, but that would require some refactoring. The second part will detail an example implementation of how to hook up your Unity project to communicate with the server. I broke these up because they can actually be used independently and also because I plan to provide different implementation examples of how to connect to the server from your Unity project. The complete code can be found on GitHub for both the multiplayer server and the Unity project. You can follow along with the links in the description. So Amazon provides an off-the-shelf multiplayer implementation called Gamelet that seems like a great fit for a variety of games. However, if you want to stay super cheap while developing, using the Amazon services in this video may be the answer for your next prototype or project. The pricing links are in the description. Okay, let's go through how to set up everything and get the multiplayer server running in Amazon. The structure is based off a chat program tutorial I found on Medium, but completely retooled to act as a game server. Head over to API Gateway and hit Create API. Then hit Build for the WebSocket API type, Name it something like Game WebSocket API. The route selection expression uses the action parameter to indicate which Lambda function to route the request to. More on that later. Hit Create API. Next, let's create a new route that will handle all the messages we receive from our game client. I called mine on message. Now let's go to the Lambda console and hit Create Function. Name it, and under Permissions, select Create a New Rule from AWS Policy Templates and give the rule a name. We do this because we're going to edit the policy next. Once created, hit the Permissions tab and click on the new rule that was attached to the function. Hit Attach Policies. Okay, so add Amazon API Gateway Invoke Full Access, Amazon API Gateway Administrator, Amazon DynamoDB Full Access, and CloudWatch Logs Full Access. I don't recommend using these blanket policies in production, but for demo purposes, it just keeps things moving. Jump over to GitHub and grab the source code for join game function and paste it in. Add a new file called join-patch.js as that's the name used in the import. Back over in GitHub, get the contents from join-patch.js and add it to the new file. These patch files are required to perform actions on the WebSocket, like sending messages or disconnecting clients. So we're ready to create the next function, let's name it game messaging. This time under permissions, select use an existing role and select the one we created for the first Lambda function. And now just go through the same motions of copying over the messaging.js code and the messaging patch files, respectively. Finally, create the third function for disconnects. Select the existing role, then copy over the code in the disconnect and disconnect patch source files into the new Lambda. Next, we have to link our API gateway routes to the three functions we just created. For the connect route, input the join game function name. Use the disconnect function name for the disconnect route. For the on message route, hit integration request panel, then use the game messaging function name. Navigate to the DynamoDB console and hit create table. Name it game sessions with a primary key of UUID. Hit create. It should take about a minute to complete. Quickly go back through each Lambda function and update the table name to match the one we just created. If you'd like, you can always leverage the environment variable so you don't have to update your code, but that would require a minor change. Go back into the API Gateway console and select Action, Deploy API. Select New Stage, name it, and give it a description and hit Deploy. Now your API Gateway is live and ready to be tested. If you'd like, tick the Enable CloudWatch options as you may need them for debugging. I would recommend doing this. Now that the API is deployed, you'll have access to a WebSocket URL. Grab that, open a terminal, and run wscat-c and paste in the URL. You should see that you are connected. I'm going to send an example operation code here to tell the server that I'm ready to play. This will add me to the next available game session. As you can see, it's created a new row using my connection ID for player one. This is what we expect. Now let's connect another client send an opcode message that we're ready to play, and now it'll fill the player two spot. 
If I control C out of this connection, the server code will automatically terminate the other player's connection. Let's do one more test. So we've got two players already connected. I'm going to send a throw message using the opcode for throw. And then as you can see, the other client was notified. Now let's do the same with a block hit message from player one to simulate a game winning event. It responds back with 91 for winner and 92 for loser to the respective clients. It's up to your game client to decide what to do with these opcodes. One final tip here is to get familiar with the CloudWatch logs. If you enabled it, you can view all the data coming into the API gateway routes. You can also view the console logs for each Lambda function as well, which is really helpful for debugging. So I debated adding a section to discuss and go through the implementation details of the three Lambda functions as it's mostly homegrown logic, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory if you read through it. If you do have any questions or comments, you can ask below or jump on Discord and I'll be happy to discuss. Stay tuned for part two where I show you how to connect to the game server with your Unity project. Thanks for watching.